Hey there, friends. How are we doing? Good. Welcome to Salty Church. We're so glad that you joined us this morning. Would you stand if you're able? My name's Miles. If we haven't met, we're excited to sing with you. Can we put our hands together? Come on, everybody's awake. Let's sing this. I'll praise in the valley. Praise on the mountain. Come on. Praise when I'm sure. And I praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when outnumber. Praise when surrounded. Come on. Cause praise is the water. My enemies drown. Sing as long as long as I'm breathing. I've got a reason to pray. glad that you're here, especially if it's your first time. My name's Miles. We're going to continue to worship together. Let's sing this. Now the darkness fades into new beginnings as we lift our eyes to a hope beyond. All creation waits Come on. with an expectation to declare the the Lord our God yeah. and we will not be moved when the earth gives way for the risen one is overcome we believe for every fear is an empty grave the silence 
doing all right this morning yeah good sometimes it's good to just take a breath you know busy morning maybe things didn't go your way maybe you, you were up early enough to get rained on which why were you up that early no I'm just kidding um, man I just uh, just as I was kind of praying and rehearsing this set honestly at home this week I, I just kind of felt the need um, to just kind of take a moment and just breathe a little bit um, but also just to remind someone maybe you're here today and this is for you maybe you're not maybe you're here and it's not for you that's okay but um, man I just felt like someone needed to hear that there's nothing that's happened in your past there's nothing that you've done that in this moment can't be remedied because we serve a faithful God and when we call on him and when we come to him and say, God, I'm, I'm broken, I need your help, he always answers. So man, if, if, that's, for you, if that's for you today, um, I hope you're encouraged and you know that there's not only a community and people that love you, but there's also a God that loves you. And he's the creator of all of this and the creator of us and the creator of you this morning. And he loves you dearly. So we're gonna sing this song and maybe you're familiar with it. You can sing it out with me. But 
the king of my heart be the mountain where I run the fountain I drink from oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide the ransom for my life oh he is my song cause you are good the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails the anchor in the waves oh he's my song let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins the echo of my days oh he's my song we sing it again let the king
never gonna let me down. Keep singing it. pray together. Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you, God, that you are good, that you have good, good plans for each one of us, Lord. And so, God, I pray that you'd bless my friends here today. Let your presence be felt. Let it be known. Let us experience the goodness of God today. We love you, Jesus. Good morning, God. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, guys, you can have a seat. Welcome to Salty. We're glad that you're here. Welcome to our online crew. We're glad that you're here too. And if we haven't met before, my name is Jacob. It's a privilege to be here with you, worshiping with you. By the way, you guys sounded great. Good job. Yeah. Give yourself a hand. Sounded great. Hey, I want to direct your attention to our screens up here. We have our digital connection card. This is our primary tool to help you get connected here at Salty. So if you're new or newer, you've never filled one of those out, why don't you do that today? You can click I'm new on that. And uh, we'll get back with you this week with some information about Salty, who we are, and how you can get connected here and take your next steps, okay? But you can also leave the work to us. If you don't want to do the digital connection card or go online, you can go to the Welcome Start Here sign in the back, and there's a great team there. They would love to meet with you, talk to you, help you get connected. And by the way, this connection card is designed for all of us to take our next best step. So whatever that may be. You can fill that out, and uh, another great thing that you could do is fill out the prayer request. So if you have a prayer need, fill that out online there as well. We'd love to serve you, pray for you in any way that we can. Well, this week we have Salty Young Adults coming up. It's going to be on Tuesday night. If you are uh, college age, 20s or 30s, this is the spot for you. So typically we do it the first Tuesday of every month. This month we changed it up, but it's still going to be the same awesome time that we have together as young adults. I say we, it's not me, it's you, young adults. I'm out of that category, but I just want you to know you're going to have a great time. It's going to be food, it's going to be fun, it's going to be music and connecting with one another and hearing a great message, okay? So come on out Tuesday night for that. Also, I don't know if you know this, but in about three weeks, we're going to celebrate Easter Sunday here at Salty. Yeah, at least one of you are excited about Easter. Awesome. It's a great time here at, at Salty, and we want to invite you out. Scan that QR code, and by the way, after you scan that QR code, send it to a friend and tell them it is your religious obligation to be at church on Easter. <laughs> Christmas and Easter are the two holidays that we know we have to go to church. So invite your friend, uh, give them some good manipulation and holy guilt to come to church on Easter. 
I say that because we're getting ready to talk about there's therefore no now con- no condemnation in Christ Jesus. So <laughs> anyway, send them that. We'd love for them to be here. By the way, uh, we have 11 opportunities across all of our campuses to be involved at Easter at Salty. We have sunrise services at all of our campuses. At Flagler Beach, it's going to be at Oceanside Bar and Grill out in the parking lot. They're going to do it there. Here in Ormond, we're going to have it right across the street at Granada. And at NSB campus, they're going to have it at Sapphire Park. It's going to be at 7 o'clock. And right after that 7 o'clock service, and by the way, all the other services are going to be normal services to- service times. So here at Ormond, it'll be 9, 10, 30, and 12. But if you want to come out for that, uh, that sunrise service at 7 o'clock, once again, invite a friend out for that. It's going to be a great time at the beach. But right after that, we're going to celebrate baptisms. Easter baptisms are so cool here at Salty. And if you're that person saying, hey, I'd love to be baptized on Easter, I think that's when Jesus was baptized, was on Easter. I'm just kidding. That's not real. I don't know when he was baptized, but he was baptized. So um, if you want to be a part of the movement of what Jesus is doing here at Salty, and you say, I want to go public with my faith, do it this, this coming Easter. You can sign up online by scanning that QR code or, like I said before, go to the Welcome Start Here sign. Tell them, I want to be baptized on Easter. I want to celebrate on that day, okay? We'd love to do that and celebrate with you. Well, I don't know if you guys remember, but it, it's been almost a year ago, March 2023, that we started the I'll Go journey here at Salty. And if you don't know what that is, we have some surfboards up that say I'll Go. People wrote their name on it saying, Yes, that's me. And it came from uh, Isaiah 6, 8, where Isaiah saw God, and he said, God, I'll go. And so here at Salty, we said a year ago, we want to be at a posture of readiness to go and to send whenever God calls us to. And so many of you committed to that and said, yes, I'll go. I'll go with my generosity. I'll help fuel the mission to rescue and empower disciples for Jesus. And so I want to just take a minute here and show you a quick video of two of my friends, Marcus and Joy, who said said yes yes to to the the Algo campaign. campaign. So So check check this out. out. Hello, I'm Marcus Sanfilippo. And I'm Joy. And we've been going to Salty Church for about two years now at the Flagler Beach campus. We are now empty nesters. We have two grown children. So basically we are now animal parents. With moving to empty nesters and coming into Salty over the past two years, we've transitioned from being involved with the youth and running youth groups and youth activities now to small groups. And then we also serve on the connection team, which is a lot of fun. Meeting a lot of new people at Salty through that. Before we started our own group, we were meeting regularly uh, with Fran and Joe at Fran and Joe's house with our small group. Made some great connections, great friends, and then Fran and Joe decided to invite us out for lunch one day and kind of kicked us out of the group. (laughs) Well, they they knew our background, that we were involved in ministry in the past, and they suggested since their group was expanding that we would start our own group doing the same type of thing on a different knife so that we could can work and just continue to grow. It turned out to be a really great opportunity and a good time for us. Life is better together. I guess we started this I'll Go journey back, I don't know, 30 years ago. <laughs> we started life and like most young couples, struggling um, to make ends meet and, and having other people walk alongside us and step into our life to support us and walk with us. And you know, as, as we reflect back on all the people that were involved and, we feel that it is you know, our time, our turn, to kind of give back to somebody that's given to us. To say I'll go is to be able to tell God, okay, even if it's something completely different and something a little out of our comfort zone, you will prepare us. The timing, the comfort, the peace that came with the whole series, we have seen such amazing things happen since we made the commitment, since we signed that card. And in that short time, we started a small group. We were able to give more than we had even wrote down on our card, way more than we had even imagined. And bring people into our our life that we did not think that would be part of our life. Kind of, if you want to call it like a New Year's resolution, some people might say, I took it as an I'll go resolution to make true relationships with people that I come in contact with 
and I've seen God give me that boldness. You, you think about it, you know, I'll go. You, you think about generosity and giving. So, of course, I'll give my tithe, my 10%, you know. But through this, it's, it's so much more. And I think you hit the nail on the head when you're looking at being involved in people's lives. I think that's so important. I said it earlier that we're better together. And, and, I, and I mean it. I think life is better when we're together and working with one another and helping to develop each other and being involved in people's lives. I'm Marcus. And I'm Joy. We'll, we'll go. go. Hopefully that was an encouragement to you. It wasn't just about the money. It was about them actually being on mission and making disciples through uh, group life. They even Marcus just said it, we're better together. And so I love that story. And so if you want to know some more about the I'll Go journey, if you're new to that, we have information back at the Welcome Start Here sign, but you can also go to salty.org slash go, okay? Well, here at Salty, we do this thing called Connection Time. We do it every week. If you're newer to Salty, what we do is we put up a four-minute timer, and it's designed for you, designed for you to connect to God, connect to one another. And um, I just, one of the ways that you can do that is by getting out of your seat and saying hi to one another, maybe grabbing some coffee, grabbing some donuts in the back. And here's the thing, I, I just read um, a scientific study, uh, not that I do that often, but I happened on to it, and it said, if you nod at people, you are a third more likely to uh, be liked by people. If you nod at people, you are 50% more likable. So here's the deal. During connection time, if you just give a simple nod to somebody, you're going to be 50% more approachable and a third more likable. So here's what you just do. You just look at them and go, hey. Hey. Or for our country and western fans, you just give a howdy. Your likability goes up. So do that during connection time. You can also spend some time right there in prayer. Pray uh, uh, by yourself. You can fill out the online connection or prayer card. Or if you have a prayer need, you can go right here to the exit sign and uh, our prayer team would love to pray with you. During connection time, you can also take communion and you can give. Those stations are around the room. And I just want to say thank you to those of you that give regularly and are part of the I'll go. So let me pray for you. We'll go into our connection time. Jesus, thank you, Lord, for uh, this time to connect to you, connect to one another. Would you bless it? In Jesus' name, amen. into our teaching time here excited that you would uh, join us today and yeah it's um it's another day it's another um, great opportunity to gather together uh, albeit a little more difficult this weekend besides uh time change stuff and uh there's an hour that somehow disappeared somewhere um but also yeah the end of our uh, the uh, day, high holy weekend of daytona beach spike week and all that um, it's always fun and interesting. How did it go for you guys, right? Was, yeah, it's all good, right? It was For us, it was like for me uh, and my staff, it was so easy this year because we left town for three days. So <laughs> it was a whole lot easier. Um, but actually, I was driving through like Destination Daytona last night, and I was on my way home from Jacksonville. We drove past the US-1 down the Iron Horse Saloon and all those places. This is the culture and all of that vibe, and some of it's like super cool, right? You know, I was thinking about that, like, you know, the, the biker, you know, culture and all of that, and, you know, to be a part of that, the biker bars and the biker, uh, you know, uh, hangouts, uh, the biker gang stuff, and uh, it's like, you know, what does it take to, to really fit in with that? Like, if you really wanted to be a part of it, if you're not already, because I know some of you are, but uh, for the rest of us, like, what does it take to be really accepted into that culture? I was wrestling with all of that and thinking about it, and it really sets a theme for us uh, here this weekend, and, and it may, I think it's obvious, right? What do, what do you need in order to fit in in Bike Week? Yeah, you got to have a motorcycle, right? 
But, but, but is it enough if you got one in your garage? <laughs> well, I have a bike, right? That doesn't mean you're a biker, right? But, but then you gotta, you gotta be able to, you gotta ride your motorcycle. That, that really helps a lot. But, but any, just any kind of motorcycle? Nah, probably not. Like, so for instance, uh, let me just, uh, we'll go flashback to um, my biker days. Ready? Here we go. Yeah, me. So, 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 so that makes me a biker, right? Yeah, I see. Some of you know, like, I don't think so, because that is a Yamaha. <laughs> that is not a Harley. It is not an Indian. It doesn't count. Not really. Like, around other Yamahas or Kawasaki people and all that kind of stuff, yeah, maybe. But in terms of bike week, that, that doesn't quite get you in, does it? Right? And probably not. So you got to have a motorcycle, the right kind of motorcycle to, you know, to be able to fit in, all of that. So it's just kind of all that was wrestling around in my mind as I was driving through the heart of some of the Ormond Beach Bike Week stuff last night. You know, so, but, but, but you know, maybe you don't ever want to fit in into the biker world, right? But you, everybody wants to fit in somewhere. that You want to belong. You know, is there any, is there any place that you wish you belong but you're not accepted at? You know, what is that for you? You know, it's like to be a surfer and you know, to be in part of the surfing culture, a biker, you know, these sub identity, you know, there's a, I just flashed the Holy Spirit, uh, pickleballers. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, it's all kinds of little subcultures that we get to be a part of, and we want to be a part of, we all want to be a part of something and then not fit in with that something. It doesn't feel good, right? We want to belong. Well, let me tell you today, and and I think this is a a key part of um, what I want to get across today. Today, I've got good news for you. Jesus wants you in his gang, in his crew, right, in his family. (laughs) Jesus wants all of you in his, and you could say gang, crew, club, what, and that's, you know, family. He wants you. He's, He's after you. He has done whatever it takes, all that it takes so that you would be accepted in his family. That's, that's the good news. Now, we understand that, but then how does that work, and what does that mean? What are the implications of it? That's quite important. And so in this series that we've been doing, it helps us with this understanding. So uh, the, the theme that we have, Not Guilty, is set by this letter that Paul wrote to the church in Rome, We've, uh, we're eight weeks of this, this is week four or five, I can't remember which, but um, all it's going to take us all the way to Easter, looking at the key elements of this letter that really helps us understand what good news is and that invitation and how to live that out. Powerful information. So each week we're going to be looking at it. Today we're going to be in, into uh, chapter eight. But before we go, let me make sure we're on the same page. Let me review a little bit about where we've been the last few weeks. And so it starts all the way back, and um, well, maybe let me just highlight the theme element, not guilty. It's, um, Paul uses a lot of language about law, a lot of legal elements to kind of take us a a logical flow and a a gospel understanding. And so just imagine the courtroom of heaven, God is the judge, you stand before God and have to answer for your life. In the end, the verdict is either guilty or not guilty, and so that, that, that's the the theme here as Paul takes us through. Now, pretty quick, Romans 3, for instance, he nails us down and just like, you know, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All. You know, the, 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 the God is holy and, and we miss the mark. And so I had been using the last couple of weeks uh, this illustration, this idea of missing mark, missing the mark. Like God is holy. It's like the center point of a bullseye. Like that is holy. And here you are, 150 feet away, aiming for, hoping to get a bullseye, and you, you know, all have sinned. Not only do we miss the mark when we're trying to honor God, but man, there's this temptation that's a nice, easy bullseye. Sin, temptations. Like, not only do we miss the mark when we're trying to honor God, but boy, that one's fun. Like, I can score some points right there, right? easy, because that's sin. That's totally contrary to God. And so Paul is saying, all have sinned. We've all missed the mark. 
right? And, 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 and in the chapter 5, we, we, um, or actually 7 is where we were at last week, in chapter 7, you know, how does that feel, you know, though we try and we try and try and, and there's temptation that's there. Well, in chapter 7, he says, you know, it's, it happens so often it, that it's predictable. You know, I, I try to do good, but sin is right there and trips me up. I delight in God's commands, but it's obvious not all of me is, is in that delight. Parts of me rebel, covertly rebel, just as I least expect that they take charge. So, so though, I, though I, I want to do what's right, boy, I, that just comes natural to me. Easy to hit the bullseye. And so, so he's, he's rest, helping us identify with, man, it's just tough. You know, in fact, he says it, he's like, oh, what a miserable person I am. You know, who will free me from this life dominated by sin and death? Here it is. Good news. Thank God. The answer is Jesus. And so I, I, I try and I try and I try and I can't. And, and that, it comes so easily to me. Ah, oh, well, thank you for Jesus. And then we go into to chapter 1, and, and he starts out, Therefore. So, given all that we've said for seven chapters, thank you, Jesus. Therefore, so we transition here, right, from therefore. Like, and you might say that this verse here in chapter 1 would be probably the big turning point of the whole entire letter that he writes. So, given all of that idea about sin and death and law, therefore... Here it is, punchline, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. This is really the inspiration for the not guilty theme. You are, like for those who are in Christ, not guilty. So given all that we've learned, therefore, there is no condemnation. How awesome is that? Like knowing that, that, that as you stand before God in all of eternity, no condemnation. Yes. It's relief. It's, it's so freeing. It is good. And so that's the center point of this letter. Um, the difficulty is that, that, that as you look at this, it's interesting. He says, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So you're like, yes, I am free, not guilty. Is that for everybody? Well, Everybody's invited into the family. Sure, uh, he, God wants you to be a part of it, but, but he, he, there's a qualification here. I underline that word. In fact, this is uh, what I would call covenant language. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. For those who are, like if you're not in Christ, well, guilty is the verdict. That's what's going to happen. Because you can't hit that bullseye every single time, and half the time you're laymen over there. Right? So for the, if you're not in Christ, then they're guilty. But for those who are in Christ, not guilty. So now all of a sudden, from a legal standpoint, a legal proof, well, what is that supposed to mean? Because I, 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 I want not guilty. I, I, I want to be free. I want to be able to hold on to no condemnation. So, so what is that? What, is, what does that mean? And so that's where we're going to spend a little bit of time today to really nail that down. Like exactly what does it mean for me to, to, to hold on to this promise? Because I want in. You know, we have this longing to be part of things. Biker, server, pickleball, whatever you want to be a part of. That's, that's, that's trivial. This is eternal. I want in. What does it take to be in? Not, not, not only to, like eternal. Like one day, but, but I want to belong today to be in. And so Paul, as he's writing, he helps us with this. And he's going to qualify this. And that's where we're going to spend some time. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives us life has set you free from the law of sin and death. And I talked about that quite a bit last week. In fact, he says this. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. So let me, let me, let me give some meaning to that because it might take you a little bit to chew on this to like what is, what is this all about. And so given the, my illustration that I've been using 
in fact, I talked about it last week, is, you know, um, sin is there. That's just completely doing whatever it is you want to do. That's the, the ways of the flesh, the stuff that comes easily. It feels good. I like it. I want to do it, even though I know it's a short-term high. It feels right, but, but it's, that my, that's what comes easy, right? So there's an understanding that God is holy, and this is what I'm aiming for. But last week, I talked about it this way. Um, what the law was powerless to do, you know, for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did. By, so so the, the, the idea of the law. So the law is um, the framework of this. Paul talked about it. 613 laws of, of the old, old covenant. And the 613 laws, the law is, you know, we're not talking about the local state, you know, United States stuff. We're talking about Old Testament covenant law. 613 rules, do this, don't do this. So it's like, do this, don't do that. That's just, and if you miss, you're, you, you know, it's sin, right? If, if, but you're, you, you always have to be aiming at, at, at getting it right. The problem with the law is it sets us up to be disappointed. Look how often I miss. I mean, I try, and I just, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't work. I, 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 I want to hit the bullseye. But, but, I mean, sometimes I don't even hit the target. That's what the law does. It sets you up to recognize, I can't do this. That is frustrating. For what the law was powerless to do because it was, it was weakened by, like my flesh is often aiming in the wrong direction and I miss. But God fixed it by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin. He, he did a sin offering so that we don't have to get perfect at the law. Jesus, so, so in my illustration, the way it worked was more like this. So I, if I gave all of you a dart and I let you throw it, right? I'm not going to do that today because that illustration doesn't work well. But, but, in, but just hypothetically, you throw the dart and I run over and I make it so that you get the bullseye. So that's what Jesus is doing. You have effort. You do the best that you can. You honor God with your life. Jesus catches it, and he's like, got it. Look at that, right? So you throw it. He moves the target, and it's like Jesus is able to make things right for you such that it's well done. But, who, of course, who it is, is who is it doing all the work? You know, Jesus is. He's running around trying to make, you know, your job is to honor him. Like, God, I want to honor, like, I, I, I try and I, I want to do my best, I'm, but I want to honor you. So Jesus does all the hard work as you work to honor him. So, so Paul, I think, is, is saying that to some extent. What the, what the law was powerless to do, Jesus accomplished. And so I'm going to honor you, God. I want to honor you because I, I want to belong to your family. I want to be in. I, if I've got that, then nothing else really matters. I want in. And so thank you, Jesus. But Paul doesn't just leave it there. It's not just, you know, you recognizing Jesus. In fact, Jesus at, at one point um, in his ministry he says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Just because you know who Jesus is and you're, you know, you go to church and you're doing some religious things kind of stuff. Like Paul says, let me take this another step further. Let me really get to the nitty gritty here, right? He's like, uh, he goes on in, in, in his letter in chapter 8. He says, um, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. That's the big red target over there. That's what he's talking about. But those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. And so all of a sudden now, he moves from language of law to Spirit. It's a whole other thing. That's, that's, it, it's a whole deeper level. He says the mind controlled by the flesh is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. Now that's a whole other thing. I mean, don't, don't we all want more life, more peace? Right? We, I, God, not only do I want to be in for all of eternity, but I also want to experience you now that it comes through spirit living. 
He goes on, he says, the mind controlled by the flesh is, is hostile to God and does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the, uh, of the flesh cannot please God. And so, like having your mindset, it's not about what I want, God. It's about what you want. That's a major shift, not just recognizing that Jesus did something and on Easter he was risen from the dead. There's this fact, there's this idea, but it's a, it's, it's a mindset that God, my, I want my spirit to connect with your spirit. I want my life, you know, to be connected to your life. God, I want to honor you with all that I do. And so, you know, in contrast, we see this calling, this invitation, and it's, and it's so radically different. It's a different way of living. We've got we to gotta work through That's what chapter 7 was all about. I've got to, you know, God, I want to honor you. It's hard, but I, but I want to honor you, so I need Jesus to help me, and then more so, I need your spirit to help me. And the radical contrast to the way the rest of the world lives. In fact, um, I mentioned earlier, we were at a conference last week, took the staff, and we went, and it was just an amazing, like 5,000, you know, church leaders, a ton of them were church planters, learning some amazing things, got to worship together, have some fun together, it was a really cool event. Um, but in some of the breakout sessions and all, um, I was engaged, some of us were engaged with um, uh, some of the leaders saying, hey, we're living in a different world nowadays, and you got to pay attention to, you know, how things are shifting. One of those is uh, the um, impact of artificial intelligence on the world around us and on the church. It's real interesting. And not only to be aware of it, but then how do we maximize some of these new tools to help the kingdom and all that? There was all kind of amazing things as a part of it. But I decided, let me, let me just put this to the test a little bit. How do I maximize it? So, so I started asking AI, the artificial intelligence, some questions about Scripture thought you'd be interested to hear what it would say. It was fascinating. So, so here's the question that I asked this artificial chat GPT for, you know, this, the, anyways, the, I don't want to get too detailed into that. Here's the question. Here's what matters. Um, how is the modern phrase, live your truth? You've heard that before, right? So people, people often say, people in your circles would say, well, you know, you just got to be true to yourself. You got to live your truth. That is a common secular mindset, okay? How does that phrase, live your truth, how is that contradictory to Jesus' message that you must deny yourself? So given Romans 8, I want to, God, I want to honor you, and I want to put aside my flesh. So what my flesh wants doesn't matter. What my spirit desires in, in terms of connecting with your spirit, that's how I want to live. So how is live your truth contradictory to Jesus' message? Um, I thought it'd be interesting. Well, here, what would artificial, artificial intelligence is going to scan the web for all kinds of information, consolidate it, give you an answer. Here's what... Um, Mr. AI said in response to my question. Watch this. It says this. The contradiction between live your truth and the call to self-denial can be seen in the foundational approach to truth and morality. So what is true? What is right? Live your truth says this is holy. You do what feels right to you and live it out however you want to. That is holy. That is live out your truth, your reality, however you want. So that's the foundational element um, that contradicts a, a, a ton with what God would say, which is holiness. Here's, he, he goes, the search engine came back and said this, live your truth promotes personal autonomy and the authority of the individual to define truth and morality. The message of self-denial and the teaching of Jesus emphasizes submission to God's will and the relinquishing of personal autonomy in favor of divine guidance. Isn't that interesting? I, I thought, I feel like, boy, search engine did a pretty good job of answering that question. I liked it. I mean, I'd still like it. Like, it, the, the difference between personal autonomy, I get to decide what is true, or completely the opposite of that. God defines what is true, and then I got to live according to that. And that's really what Paul is saying, but this is not God's Word. 
This is not, I mean, this is true, but I don't, this is not an authority by which I'm going to live by, right? So I go to God's Word. I believe that, that, that Paul is inspired by God to write scriptures, and that is the ultimate truth. So what is, how would Paul answer that question? And here's really the highlight of this whole message, and I think maybe even the center point of what it means to be in or out in God's mind, where Paul writes this. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. However, you are not in the realm of the flesh, doing, living out your truth. You are not, you, you, you are not you, you, the, the realm of the flesh, right? Now, here's the thing. In covenant language, whether you're, whether you're in or you're out, the big words there are if. You're in if, and you're out if. Here's where Paul is like, let me get real specific here. He says, if indeed, so if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, then, then you're in. If, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to, to, to the death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. So you are in or you are out, com- not, not dependent on what church you go to. Not, not, not based on your religious activities. Here's the, here's the big push for today. You are in or you are out. You are guilty or you are not guilty, dependent upon whether or not the Spirit of God is within you. That is the defining element. And God is inviting you in. He has done all that it takes that you can be in Christ. Like that it, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. How do you know you're in Christ or not in Christ? You have the Spirit of God within you. If the Spirit of God is within you, you are in today all the way into eternity. And yeah, there's a battle that we've got to wrestle with day in and day out. But then if we have the Spirit of God within us, then He he helps us to know how to honor Him and how to live the life that we have. So are you in or out? It depends on the Spirit of God within you. And so I want to make sure I leave you with that invitation to be in. Because we all want to be accepted. We all want to belong. We all want to be a part of something. And this is the most important, this is the only thing that's really important about in or out. And the defining element is, is God's spirit within you? Let me land with this really quick and, and we'll be done here. Where Jesus says, you know, if you, if, if you don't have what you need, what do you do? You go get it. Ask. He says, ask, it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Everyone, do you want in? Everyone who asks receives. Everyone, everyone who seeks finds and the door will be open to you. But, but then here's, here's the last thing here. You know, which of you fathers, you know, if your son asks for a fish, you give him a snake or a, an egg, give him a scorpion. Though, even though you're evil, you know how to give good gifts to your children. Here's where it is today. Here's where we land. How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? You want in? Got to have a spirit. How do you get the spirit? Ask. Are you in? Do you want to be in? It all lands here. And so, I think it's paramount that, that all of us, whether you're new to this or you've been around for a long time, let's, let's close out today with, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for what, what you're offering me. I, I, I want in, and I want to stay in. I want to honor you with all of my life until my last days, right? That's what this means. Now, here's the thing. There's more to the story. We're going to be going into chapter 10 next week, and it leads us all the way to, to Eastern chapter 12. Uh, there's more. But for today, let's, let's land with this. We're going to do our, uh, ref- it's, normally I would do, a, yeah, it's a reflection. So you can talk about it if you want, but ultimately, uh, now's the time to be talking to God about this. And so I want to, you know, I put something together for you to look at on the screen. You say it however you want to say this. But I'd love for you to take a moment and just connect with God based on what you've just heard to walk away from here today confident 
about what this means. And then walk away knowing there's more and there's more to learn, there's more to grow in. We got that, but at least you have this for today. And here's where I land is this. You know, here's how I would say it. You know, God, I, I, I've been living my truth and I still wrestle with it, but I want your truth. And you promised that when I ask, you would deliver, right? So today I ask for your Holy Spirit to fill me. God, I surrender to my life to you. Some of you for the first time, sometimes again. God, God, I surrender. Heal me as I allow your spirit to lead me. Um, I, I, this is for all of you. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, right? And so this is, the, in the defining moment, in or out, is God, give me your spirit within me. And this is for you. This is for everyone. And so I, want, I, I hope that all of us, whether you're watching online, Flagler, you're in New Smyrna, it doesn't matter where you are, God wants you in his family. And this seals the deal for all of eternity. There is nothing more important. So let me allow you some time to spend on this. And then once this time is up, we'll, we'll come back and we'll close things out. But uh, to me, it's paramount that you have that opportunity. And then from here on, that's what the church is here for you, to help you to understand more how to live this out. But spend some time with this, and then we'll be right back.